be arrested, but fighting with the Chandler officer. A dashboard camera is rolling as he and the officer fall to the ground. Pew even puts the officer in a chokehold. Backup officers rush in, but Pew continues to fight. Here, Pew is only 18 years old and, as you can see, unbelievably aggressive. It was pretty scary. The same type of aggression Adam Martinez says he heard echoing through the walls last night as the 17 year old victim screamed bloody murder, allegedly at the hands of Pew. The way she was yelling, I mean, it was horrible. And she just kept yelling, it hurts, he's killing me. What? That scuffle you saw there happened two years ago. In Ch it also happened in Chandler. That was for an aggravated DUI, a class four felony. Tonight he faces charges of attempted murder and kidnapping. John. Yeti, you hear officers talk about some of these suspects exhibiting superhuman strength when they're all on different kinds of drugs. Do they think right. that was a, a factor in all of this? Don't know. You mean the, the first one or this yes, one? Yes, the first Don't one. Don't know either one, but you're right. I mean, the DUI happened in that video, and he was obviously under the influence in that video. As far as this attempted murder, this alleged attempted murder, we don't know that yet. Okay, Yetta Gibson live tonight. Thanks, Yetta. A man accused of killing a federal drug agent in the Valley 11 years ago faces a judge, Augustine Mendoza, and entered a not guilty plea this morning in a Phoenix courtroom. This was Mendoza after he was ex uh, extradited from Mexico last month. Prosecutors say Richard Foss was an undercover assignment buying meth from Mendoza's henchman when he was killed. The man accused of a hit and run that nearly killed a young girl also goes before a judge tonight. 28 year old Saul Figueroa seen sitting here with his hands folded across his lap. He made his first court appearance tonight. The judge setting a cash bond at $90,000 ordering him not to contact the alleged victim or return to the scene of the crime. Meantime, 18 year old Vanessa Arvizu remains in critical condition tonight. She was standing on a street corner at Fifth Street and Hatcher yesterday with her bike. Police say that's when Figueroa hit her with his car and took off. Tonight, friends brought flowers and candles to that crash site. It's terrible. Somebody to run her over like that is, is sick. Investigators caught and arrested Figueroa yesterday. He apparently admitted to drinking and driving. We're hearing from the man DPS says triggered that deadly crash on the Loop 101 over the weekend, the crash that stalled drivers for hours. Three people died in this fiery crash on Saturday along the Loop 101 and McKellops. DPS officers say 70-year-old Lou Hamden of Alberta, Canada, got out of his car to see why traffic was stopped, and that triggered the pileup. However, today, Hamden told Fox 10 he rear-ended another car, and that car stopped in front of him. DPS is still investigating. And we have a Fox follow-up on that acid spill that closed streets in downtown Phoenix on Friday. DPS is now investigating that spill. Hydrofluorosilic acid leaked Friday from an 18-wheeler near 5th Avenue in Monroe. The highly concentrated acid is used for dry cleaning, but it can be dangerous, particularly if it touches human skin, even deadly in some cases. Hazmat crews neutralize that acid with soda ash. Loretta Bowersock's home is going on the auction block. She is the mother of Terry Bowersock of Terry's Consign and Design. Loretta disappeared shortly before Christmas and she's presumed dead, but her body has not yet been found. The Tempe home Bowersock shared with her companion, Tom Benderly, foreclosed back in November and it will go up for auction this Saturday. Benderly committed suicide in the home after police linked him to Bowersock's disappearance. Tonight's Fox Quick Picks a chase in San Bernardino, California comes to a deadly end. Police shooting and killing a 13 year old after he backed a stolen vehicle into a patrol car at the end of the pursuit. And a 14 year old inside that car was arrested after a brief foot chase. To Philadelphia, a fire in the worst of all places, the uh, daycare center. Children are evacuated, dozens of them, they made it safely out. It took crews about an hour to get things under control. Some scary moments for kids on their way to school in Indiana. A bus full of students sideswiped by a truck. Six students suffered minor injuries. The driver was the most seriously hurt. Witnesses say the truck appeared to be on the wrong side of the road leading to that wreck. An Ohio Supreme Riding Court down. justice pleads guilty Riding to drunk right. driving charges. Alice Resnick was pulled over after cops saw her weaving in and out of traffic. She must now take part in an alcohol treatment program and pay a fine. Her attorney say she's a recovering alcoholic who fell off the wagon. Her license has been suspended. Post-war Picasso masterpieces are just some of the treasures expected to fetch a lot of money on the auction block. 
12 paintings by impressionists and modern masters are being auctioned off at Christie's in London. Back to Picasso for a minute. Until recently, his post-war paintings were believed to be less significant than his earlier work. They sat down to watch the Super Bowl. Instead, they end up super mad. This after their cable goes out, and you won't believe why. Mark Martinez joins us live to tell us why, Mark. Well, Kerry, obviously a lot of people wait anxiously all year long for Super Bowl Sunday. But this year, the game ended early for thousands of people in Mesa, and one person is to blame. Bounce. McNabb throws! Touchdown, Philadelphia! It was touchdown and then turned off for thousands of East Valley Cable customers Sunday night. Obviously a big viewing night. You wanted to be ready for any mishap. Certainly weren't counting on anything like this. Cable America's Chris Direct says 2,000 customers lost cable right after the pivotal play in the third quarter by the Philadelphia Eagles. Crews worked into the early morning to restore service. At sunrise, they found a through and through bullet hole. You can see it right here. The bullet cut through a fiber optic cable at Mesa and Broadway, about 30 feet in the air. Cable is actually uh, very small, and to actually hit it would be very difficult uh, up in on a pole the way it is. It would be nearly impossible to hit the cable on purpose. One possibility, the bullet may have been fired in celebration. Right after the Philadelphia, maybe it was a Philadelphia fan, I don't know, uh, could have been, yes. Cable America is apologizing to fans whose Super Bowl plans were ruined by a single shot. We're very sorry it happened. We're explaining to them about the bullet hole. Most customers are very uh, understanding, actually. They know it wasn't us, that it wasn't anything we did to that. Mesa police say they have no suspects or lead in the shooting. Cable America is offering a $2,000 reward for any information that could lead to an arrest in this shooting. It's a, a felony violation because of Shannon's law. Mark Martinez, Fox 10 News. This is Fox 10 News at 9. Things went smoothly last week, but today we hear that Michael Jackson's trial will be taking a few